you've been kind of on the lonely end, certainly on the Republican side of several votes pertaining to Israel. This is but one example, House Resolution 771, which is entitled Standing with Israel as it defends itself against the barbaric war launched by Hamas and other terrorists. And what I'm displaying here is a tweet from AIPAC, which is the Israel lobby saying that you, Thomas Massey, are siding with the squad, with AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar and opposing supporting Israel, opposing condemning Hamas. Uh, you also were the sole vote against kind of a symbolic uh, recognition of Israel and uh, saying that anti-Semitism, uh, or sorry, anti-Zionism equates to anti-Semitism. Could you just explain your stance on Israel, where you're coming from, and what some of these, you think some of these critics might be missing about your position. Sure. That was the first of 19 votes. Today, we're going to take our 19th virtue signal vote here in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess I got off on the wrong foot early and have been voting consistently ever since. The title of that bill is wonderful. I have no disagreement with the title of that bill, but there are four or five pages that go after that title. And um, that, well, it's a resolution. The, the first, you know, uh, objection I have to it was there was an, inside of that an open ended uh, pledge of military support for Israel. OK, mm -hmm. we've we never declare wars anymore. The administration just kind of goes and does it and Congress keeps funding it, but they find the imprimatur for their activity right there in these resolutions. So the, the open-ended guarantee of um, support for that war that's contained in the text of that bill, but not the title, could have implied boots on the ground. And that may be the only vote we get to take in Congress on, on whether we're going to do that or not. So number one, I don't support that that notion. Uh, number two, they were in that resolution, they mentioned Iran. Okay. In the very first resolution, they're already trying to expand the war and incorporate as much of the Middle East as they can. There's some people that just can't wait to attack Iran and they want to use this as the nexus to get there. So that was in the resolution, a condemnation of Iran. I think we should be trying to constrain the conflict, not to expand it in the first resolution of support that we passed. There were also, um, uh, there was a, a part of that uh, resolution wanted uh, stronger sanctions on Iran, and I don't support sanctions, never voted to sanction a, a sovereign country in the 11 years that I've been in Congress. I think it leads to war. Sanctions actually create crimes only for U.S. citizens because we're not going to go put somebody in jail in, in another country who trades with Iran. What we're proposing to do when we pass a sanction is to make a federal law that would result in the imprisonment of a U.S. citizen who, do, who trades with Iran. And it hurts the people who are in the country. I think it actually edges us closer to war instead of getting us out of war. So that and there were even more reasons to vote against that. Um, even though I support Israel and I condemned Hamas, I did that on my own. I, may, I put out a statement. I support Israel's right to defend itself, and I condemn these attacks. But that wasn't I mean, enough. One, one that you took even more heat for was this one where you you were the only vote against it. And it was what I guess you would describe as a virtue signal bill, where um, the essentially it's the House reaffirming the state of Israel's right to exist, and two, recognizing uh, that denying Israel's right to exist is a form of anti-Semitism. Um, where are you coming from on these sorts of bills that aren't even really directly tied to any sort of military aid or anything like that? Well, I, I recognize Israel's right to exist, okay? Yeah. Uh, I have to preface all of this stuff with that because people would imply from a vote that I don't. But um, when they passed that, I said, you're basically saying that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And people argued with me that that wasn't Zionism, you know, that, that those words weren't a proxy for Zionism. Well, what's interesting is the next week they passed almost the same resolution 
and they replaced Israel's right to exist with Zionism. So maybe I'm just giving them clues for how to write their bills more directly uh, because the next resolution said that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. And there are hundreds mm. of thousands of Jewish people who disagree with that statement. In fact, Gerald Nadler, who's the most senior member of Congress who's Jewish, went to the floor and gave a five-minute speech, uh, which is a long speech in the House of Representatives. This isn't the Senate. But he gave a five-minute speech on why that's untrue to say that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Now, there are a lot of people who are anti-Semitic who are also uh, against the state of Israel, but you can't equate the two. And I think these uh, 19 votes after today are sort of a it's, a, it's part of the war effort for Israel to make it hard for the, for anybody in the United States to criticize what they're doing. Like you, every mm -hmm. two or three days here in Congress, you have, we're taking these votes that a lot of what's in the resolution is just obvious and doesn't need to be stated. It's kind of like Black Lives Matter. Okay, you have to mm -hmm. say Black Lives Matter. Now they're making, they're doing the equivalent with Israel now. Israel matters. And so I agree that Israel matters, but we don't have to take all these votes. And, and some of them are going into campuses and trying to limit free speech um, by withholding federal money. If you, uh, if, the, if you allow anti things that are considered anti-Semitic, by the way, let's take a, a second just to talk about that word. I've been called anti-Semitic for merely not supporting the money that goes to Israel. APAC ran an ad. Uh, they spent $90,000 in my district running ads um, implying that I was anti-Semitic and then in a tweet said that I was anti-Semitic for not spending, not voting for the $14.3 billion to go to Israel, even though I've not voted for foreign aid to go to anywhere. Ever. Do people do people buy that talking point of Apex? Um, the ad was not effective. Like <laughs> when you when they run an ad in my district that said Thomas Massey was the lone Republican to vote against this resolution, and uh, people are like, back in my district, they've I have a history of being the only vote like that was a no vote, like on the CARES Act, and explaining why it's a bad vote, and then a couple years later, they you know they find out wow. Why weren't why didn't everybody vote the way he did? So I mean, I've developed Chuck, some trust with my constituents on those lone yeah. votes. I mean, Ch Chuck Schumer has accused you of being anti-Semitic. On he's blasted you on Twitter. I mean, he, here's the tweet. He said, Rep, uh, "Representative Massey, you're a sitting member of Congress. Uh, this is anti-Semitic, disgusting, dangerous, and dangerous. exactly the type of thing I was talking about in my Senate address. Take this down." And what he's referring to is the uh, Drake meme where he's uh, say, uh, you know, no, no to American patriotism. Yes. To, uh, Zionism con Congress these days. Um, I mean, were you, it, what, what was your reaction to having, you know, the, well, uh, we, someone as prominent as Chuck Schumer, uh, accusing you of antisemitism? Well, we ratioed him on that pretty soundly. Um, I quote tweeted him and said, if only you cared about half as much about our border as you care about my tweets. And um, he, he's got like over 10,000 comments now on, on his tweet to me. Um, it's, I mean, it's just simply not true. By the way, in the replies to him, you'll find somebody who pointed out that of, of all 535 members of Congress, he received this cycle, he received more money from pro-Israel lobby, according to opensecrets.org, than any other member of Congress. So... Um, it just, it rings hollow when he says that. And even, he's even in disagreement with Gerald Nadler, for instance, on equating anti-Zionism to anti-Semitism. Yeah. And I'll admit, memes are not the, the most precise way to convey um, a, a point, but they can be effective. And there, you know, that meme... It doesn't imply that there, there's nothing in that mean that implies those two things are mutually exclusive. And that wasn't my intent. 
I was just pointing out that you could, you could, it's okay in Congress to be patriotic for Israel, but you can't be patriotic for America. That's considered nationalism, which is American nationalism is a dirty word. And I know it's loaded and there are a lot of people that have attached themselves to it. But if you take it in the generic sense, it's, you know, pride in your country. So I use yeah. the word patriotism. Pride, I mean, pride in America is, is looked down upon right now. It's out of fashion. But pride in Israel is something we have to vote on two or three times a week now in Congress. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens, or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.